I'm not too happy with you, Nick. <laughs> I'm sorry, bro. This movie, it's not good. I think out of all of the Nick Cage movies I've seen, this one is definitely the worst. It's so bad that it's hardly even memeable. And the weirdest thing is that it seems like this movie should be like a really amazing meme. If you're making a movie about aliens and jujitsu and Nicolas Cage wearing a long wig and him doing backflips and being all goofy, it seems like a no-brainer. You can pull off some pretty amazing memes in a movie like this. Unfortunately, this movie is the worst thing I've ever seen. It sucks to say this, Nick, because I love your movies, man. But God damn it, this one is just so bad. It's so, it's so unbelievably terrible. Not even I could save 2020. I have covered so many Nick Cage movies like Mom and Dad. Even the weird ones like Between Worlds. They had some great memes. They were fun to watch. Put your right foot in. You take your right foot out. Giddy up. This movie is just Boring. None of the characters are likable, aside from Nick Cage. And the worst part is, I can hardly even show you guys why it's so bad. Because if I attempt to, then the people who made the movie will take my video down. Angry Joe made a review of this movie, and they were manually taken down twice by Lasso Group. It's like a company that represents Paramount or something, I don't know. But they forced him to revise his review three times. They weren't even claiming the video, they just straight up removed it. <laughs> what are they trying to do? Are they trying to convince everybody that this movie, Jiu Jitsu, is good? Even the people that haven't seen it, they have a good idea, you know? Like, this movie, it's it's not great. Who are you trying to fool by taking these videos down? In fact, you're losing money by taking these videos down. These videos are free promotion for your product. I know they're trash talking your product, but some people might be curious enough to go out and watch it because of these videos. Get a bunch of your mates together, put in a dollar each, it's only $7 on Amazon Prime, and watch this because we had to, okay? So you could go through the torment with us. I guess Lasso Group doesn't like money? I'm not sure what they're trying to do. I mean, this movie lost money. Why does Paramount hate money so much? I don't get it. What's going on? And the worst part is that Angry Joe's first review was fair use. In his third revision of his video, he felt the need to <laughs> recite Article 13 and describe fair use to these people so they can get it through their thick skulls. Like, you're being idiots. These videos are helping you. I know it. It looks like they're not helping you because, you know, it's, it's mean. These are mean videos. They're, they're being mean to you. I, I get it. But these videos are making you money. I know, it's it's hard to hard to believe. <laughs> According to IMDb, this is the lowest rated Nicolas Cage movie ever. I'm not sure if it actually is, but I agree, it should be. <laughs> this movie is so, so bad. It's so unbelievably terrible. Okay, where do I even begin with this? So this movie tries to hook you in at the very beginning by showing Nick Cage with this Burmese fishing hat thing. And it's like, oh my God, there he is. There's our boy, Nick, he's there. Let's go, this is gonna be fun. And then he just kind of disappears for the next hour. <laughs> yeah, they just kind of forget about him for a whole hour and then he comes back. To be fair, they only had Nick Cage for three days of filming and they did manage to get a lot of footage of him for this movie. They must have been like rushing him around like, come on, Nick, let's go. <laughs> we gotta film this. All right, come on, let's go. We're, go we're filming this now. Come on, Nick. <laughs> God damn, Nicolas Cage, you're a hero. <laughs> Honestly, Nick is the only redeeming part of this movie. Every single other character is bland and flavorless. I don't even remember any of their names. They should have had fun with this movie, you know what I mean? It's based off a comic book. It's about these ninja guys that fight an alien that comes to Earth to beat people up. It's supposed to be stupid and silly. Make it stupid and silly. Why'd they go all serious with it? I don't, uh, it's so bad. It's so bad. The director, writer, and producer of this movie is Dimitri Logothetis, Logothetis, I don't know how to say that name. He basically only works on martial art movies, it looks like. These movies that I've never heard about, Kickboxer, Vengeance, Kickboxer, Retaliation, Wings of the Dragon. And to give some credit to this movie, there are some relatively entertaining fight scenes. And I know that's mainly what this movie is, just fighting. So if that was all Dimitri was going for, you know, let's just, I don't care, let's just make a movie and have some cool fights in it, then fine. Watch this movie if you want to. But if you want to be entertained, aside from just, you know, guy punches guy, guy punches guy back, then I would watch anything else. <laughs>
Apparently, this is the first Hollywood movie ever to be filmed in Cyprus. So, F's in the chat for Cyprus. <laughs> the first Hollywood movie ever is an absolute train wreck. And guess what, guys? Nicolas Cage's role was supposed to be for Bruce Willis. So, I guess this movie could have been worse. <laughs> and to think that was possible, wow. Bruce Willis is kind of in the same boat as Nick Cage right now, just taking any role that comes his way. Please, I need some money. All these homes that I have, I have to pay off the fucking insurance. <laughs> I'm drowning in debt. <laughs> Nicolas Cage isn't even the protagonist in this movie. Guess who is? This guy named Elaine Moosey. Yeah, I've never seen him in anything before. He was in Kickboxer Retaliation and Kickboxer Vengeance. So he definitely knows the director. So the director was probably just being like really nice to this guy. Maybe they're lovers. I don't know, but I'm just gonna be honest. Elaine Moosey is not a good actor. It felt like he didn't even act in the movie. I think he said like five lines. I don't know. He didn't say anything of note. What's her name? He did stunts in X-Men Apocalypse and Suicide Squad. <laughs> so he's got a pretty good track record. Oh my God. <laughs> it also stars Frank Grillo. He's that tough guy that you see every once in a while in these action movies. And you have no idea who he is. He just kind of shows up because he's like, he looks tough, you know? He's got that tough guy look to him. So I just like toss him in action movies. He was in Captain America, The Winter Soldier and Civil War. Those are probably the only movies you've ever seen him in. He was also the sergeant in The Purge Anarchy. So I guess there's that. <laughs> it also stars Tony Jaw. He's a pretty renowned martial artist and fighter in movies. This movie was all about just fighters, fighting fighters. <laughs> it's funny because yeah, there was some good action in this movie but the only fight scenes i cared about were the ones with nick cage because it's just hilarious thinking about nick cage like flipping around and doing stunts and fighting in general <laughs> i guess i should start talking about the movie now so yeah the movie starts with this guy running through the woods there's a bunch of throwing stars being shot at him like a hundred throwing stars and they're all missing him somehow, except for a few of them that hit him right before he jumps off of a cliff into some water. Then Nick Cage finds him in the water at night. This Burmese couple decides to revive this guy and they bring him to an American army base. And the soldiers are like, oh, who is this guy? And the Burmese woman is like, uh, I can't speak English. And so they bring over the translator and the translator is like acting all goofy because he doesn't know how to speak Burmese very well. <laughs> It's stupid. There's so many filler scenes in this movie. Honestly, this translator guy is the second best character in the entire movie. At least he has some character. He has some sort of personality. He's fun to watch, you know? Hey, crab man. Hey, crab man. The other characters are just blank slates that punch. That's it. So then this random guy that was saved by the Burmese people is being interrogated by the American soldiers. They're like, oh, who are you? Who do you work for? Blah, blah, blah. And then Tony Jaw's character comes out of nowhere. He's like blending in, you know, all Assassin's Creed style behind these monks. And then he looks all menacingly at the soldiers. He puts his hood down. Oh my God, it's action time. And then there's like a... 10 minute action scene. Tony Jaw then proceeds to beat the shit out of like a hundred US soldiers. And they're all armed with weapons, like guns, you know, that shoot bullets. He would be dead in an instant, but okay. This isn't the matrix. He can't just dodge bullets. He would die. <laughs> but yeah, okay, so this random guy comes out of nowhere and beats the shit out of all these soldiers. There's even this scene of this soldier with a rifle, and he just runs at Tony Jaw with the rifle and doesn't shoot it. He just runs at him with the rifle in his hand. He's like, oh, here I come. I'm just gonna beeline it straight for the guy that's clearly better at martial arts than me. <laughs> Instead of using the weapon that is in my hands to shoot him. So yeah, he saves Elaine Moosey's character. And then they both start fighting all the soldiers. They're both like insane martial artists. The sound effects are so bad. It honestly sounds like they download free stock sound effects from YouTube or something. It's awful. And then the movie does something very strange. 
it goes into first person. <laughs> so it shows Elaine Moosey's character from first... I can't even fucking talk. I can't even tell you. It's so stupid. For whatever reason, Dimitri decided to go into first person with this fight scene a little bit. It's very strange. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen something like this before in my life, except in that one movie. What is that one movie called? Where it's like all in first person, but that's like its gimmick, you know? But this movie just randomly plops you into first person. It's so weird. It's like that Doom movie. Remember when they go into like that random video game sequence? It's really awful. Why did they do that? I'm guessing Dimitri has never seen the Doom movie. Because if he had, then he probably wouldn't have done this. So Elaine Moosey's playing this guy named Jake. Jake meets up with some more jujitsu people and they fight off some more soldiers. There are parts in this scene where the soldiers shoot the jujitsu people point blank with their rifles, and I guess nothing happens. Like they're right next to them. They shoot them with the gun, you know, with the bullets come out. Maybe they were using blanks. I mean, th that would probably make more sense. The funniest part is this mistake is so easily avoidable. You know, you don't have to edit in the, the bullet sounds and, and the guns flashing in this part, you know, just don't do that. And then you're good, right? Like, that's not something that you messed up during filming. So then these random shockwaves blow these people backwards. I guess that's the alien. So yeah, remember, this movie has an alien in it. And I guess it has this weird shockwave ability. I should probably explain the story, right? So... <laughs> It just seems so pointless. So Jake, the main character, is this insane jujitsu warrior. And when he took that stumble off the cliff, he lost his memory. You know how, like, the hero always loses their memory, and then that's how the story teaches the audience about everything, because they have to teach everything to the guy again. So he's slowly being taught again that there's this alien that comes out of nowhere and kills people, and yeah, you know. So the soldiers apprehend Jake again, and they're very concerned about these random shock waves that are happening. So they start talking to him and they're like, yo, what's going on, dude? Can you explain this to us? I'm sure you have the answers. <laughs> so the soldiers bring Jake into the forest because I guess there's more radiation here or something. I don't know, plutonium? They said plutonium a couple times in this movie. Let's just say it's not just about plutonium levels anymore. Whatever. <laughs> They're in the alien forest, that's all you need to know. And they get attacked by the alien that uh, loves throwing stars. So Myra is the name of this girl cop, and she escapes with Jake. Mostly everyone else dies, except for the American soldier captain guy. And this is the first time we get to see the alien. Oh my god, it's so cool looking. It's like a human, but with armor on and a screen over its face. Very alien, coming from Elvis the alien, who, who looks like me. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm trying to say is this alien sucks. Doesn't look like an alien, okay? It doesn't. Remember those aliens from Prometheus? Yeah, those guys were more alien than this alien. Because at least they were they were huge and scary looking. This guy's just like a dude in armor. This captain guy picks up a machine gun and blasts the shit out of the alien and it kind of just falls over and it looks like it's dead. And you're like, oh, okay. So the movie's over then. The alien's dead. But of course, it has healing powers because... They they always do, don't they? In these movies, they always have healing. They can always heal. He gets up off the ground and he grabs the American soldier guy and uses his microwave hand ability on his neck and ouch, it, it really burns. So that sucks for him. So Jake ends up running away from Myra and ends up in Nick Cage's hut. Yeah, Nick Cage has a hut and uh, Jake just kind of like falls into it. He's like, oh, I'm here now. I'm, I'm, I'm in the Nick Cage hut. Misaka is you, Sokka. They fight for a little while, and I guess this scene's kind of fun to watch because Nick Cage is just fun to watch in general. Like, you are pretty weird. Like, you're a weird dude. <laughs> Why, thank you very much. Just the way he talks is entertaining. That's my favorite chair. I knew you'd find it comfortable. I feel like this movie could have been better if they had Nick for more than three days. It's funny because in the scenes where they don't use a buy double, and they have Nick swing this this sword. You can tell that he's kind of struggling to swing the sword. <laughs> Nick does come in clutch with his famous ho ho ho. <laughs> <laughs> you know that thing that he does? Ho ho ho. Ho ho ho. Get off my piano. And then we have, I think, one of the only memes in the entire movie. Nick tells Jake that he makes paper hats out of newspaper. You see the attention to detail? It's an art. 
It's a craft. That's what he does in his free time. And then he puts one of these paper hats on. I think that was my favorite part of the movie. What do you think, Nick? Hey, not my best work, but this hat sure is comfortable. Check me. Later in the fight, he goes, see, I can fly too. See, I can fly too. It's obviously not him, but it's so funny just picturing Nick Cage doing this flip. <laughs> like this movie is trying really hard to convince you that Nick Cage is this like super martial artist. <laughs> and I think that's the best part about it. So then these random bland flavorless jujitsu people come out of nowhere and they're like, okay, we're gonna take Jake because the fun is over. We don't want the viewers to have too much fun watching this movie, so. And then Nick tries to save the audience and he says, you can't take him, he's crazy, like me. <laughs> His mind's all messed up. He's crazy, like me. <laughs> this whole movie should have just been them sparring and talking in this hut. That would have been a better movie. So then all these characters take a walk. They walk for a long time. And then Nicolas Cage gets hungry, so he asks for a noodle or a pickle. He, he wants one of those things. Like a noodle or... Pickle. That was weird to put in the script. I guess that was their attempt at making a Nick Cage meme. When the best Nick Cage memes come from just his demeanor, you know? Just let him be weird, let him act crazy. That's when you get the good Nick Cage memes. I don't even like pickles. So then they enter this like ancient temple and there's this portal thing on the wall and apparently it opens up every six years when a comet goes over the earth. And this portal is like a bridge to another world where this alien decides to just go to Earth every six years and beat the shit out of people and kill them. Yeah, that's basically all the alien is. He's just kind of a bully. Every six years, he wants to come to Earth and, and bully the humans, and then he leaves. It's weird. According to Nick Cage, he wants like the best fighters on Earth to fight him. I guess he's kind of like Cell from Dragon Ball Z. Remember when he said that tournament for all the best fighters to fight him? It's like the same thing, except way worse. <laughs> out of all the intelligent life forms out there, the one that travels to Earth through this portal is this superior alpha male alien that really loves to fight. <laughs> he actually comes here from a place millions of light years away looking for a fight with you, the chosen jujitsu. And apparently if he doesn't get to fight the best fighters on Earth, then he just goes ballistic and kills everything that's alive. And if he doesn't get it, he stays and he kills everything. He just goes around killing everything. That's what they tell us anyway. Can you imagine this alien just walking up to a sloth that's dangling from a tree and just strangling it to death? Because <laughs> he's so bored. <laughs> Where is my chosen jujitsu? He's like a belligerent, angry, drunk Irishman that finally left the bar at 6 a.m. and really just wants to fight someone. According to Nick Cage's character, this alien taught their ancestors how to fight. He taught them jujitsu. He taught our ancestors how to fight them. Yeah, that's uh, weird. So many, many years ago, this alien was really bored. So he came to Earth and he was like, yo, this species kind of sucks at fighting. So I guess I'll teach them and then come back every six years and see if they can fight me at all. And if not, well, I guess I'll just kill everything. <laughs> and if he kills everything, then what is he coming back to every six years? Wouldn't he just come back once? Because clearly it's like this killing machine, right? Nobody can stand up to this thing. So it would just come back once. It would go to Earth, teach everybody jujitsu, leave, come back six years later, and just kill everything. Although he doesn't kill everything if he kills nine jujitsu masters. Now Brax fights nine fighters. But if any of the fighters refuse to fight him, he devours anything that walks, flies, crawls. Right. So every six years he kills nine jujitsu masters and leaves. So how long has he been doing this? I guess if I was a jujitsu master, um, I could train someone to fight in the same style to, you know, die to this alien six years from now, or I could hatch up a plan to kill this alien when he arrives, you know, with like a nuke or something. Kaboom. If this alien is gonna kill everybody, just like vacate the premises, right? Have everyone leave and then build like a massive wall, like a really big, big, big wall around this temple. And then when this alien comes through the portal, just drop a nuke on its head. Wow, that's an issue solved. But yeah, I guess just keep training people to die to this alien. That makes sense. 
What? It's hard enough just imagining this alien teaching mankind how to fight jujitsu. How do you do that? How do you talk to people to begin with? He just arrives at Earth. He's like, hey, what's up, guys? I come in peace, except I don't. But um, that won't be till six years. So uh, just put your fists up like this. <laughs> and how bored is this alien that he goes to Earth to teach these people how to fight? God damn. Do you have like a spaceship you can just go around and find better fighters than humans? I'm sure there's probably better species out there. I don't know, maybe not. If humans suck so much at fighting, why doesn't this alien just fight its own species, right? Oh, that would make too much sense. Maybe this is the last one. This is the last alien of, of its kind. Maybe the comic explains it better. <laughs> I guess I should mention that this alien's name is Brax. Yeah, its name is Brax, I don't care. <laughs> so then they're all walking again and Jake looks puzzled. So Nick asks him about that. He's like, hey, are you puzzled? You look puzzled. You look puzzled. You puzzled? I mean, I get it. I'm puzzled. I'm real puzzled. Nicholas, thank you so much. Thank you for the way you deliver your lines. Because if, if you weren't in this movie, I was gonna say that Dimitri owes Nick more money than what he probably paid him because he's the only reason anybody would ever decide to watch this piece of shit. But they lost money making this, so... I guess I take that back. In the next scene, Brax fights three jujitsu warriors and kills them all. To be fair, it's not a bad fight scene. It's kind of fun to watch. So then Jake is captured by the army captain and then he wakes up and the army guy's like, hey, what's up, dude? So I just want to tell you that um, the alien takes like five to six seconds to heal from like crazy wounds. Yeah, that that's it. So see ya. <laughs> Was that really worth knocking him out for? You could have just told him that instead of, Whatever. So Jake's like, oh, uh, good to know, dude, thanks. And then he, then he leaves. So Nick Cage is just chilling by a bonfire and Jake meets him there. Nick Cage then tells Jake what happened prior to him falling off the cliff and losing his memory. So apparently the alien came and he killed someone and everyone freaked out and Jake ran away and the alien chased him and then he jumped off a cliff. Yeah, so he was just a big coward. I guess. And apparently Jake is like the ultimate fighter in this movie. He is the, he's the protagonist, but he's a huge pussy at the same time. I'm confused. If he's like the ultimate fighter, why wouldn't he fight the alien? He just, he just ran away. He was like, oh, you killed my friend. <laughs> Bye. He didn't fight the alien. He just ran away. That's weird. Oh, and during this flashback scene, they decide to edit in these like spiraling shots, these transitions that, that spiral the camera. It's very headache inducing. It sucks. I hate it. Why would they, why would you do that? I get this is like an action movie and you'd want things to be fast and chaotic and, but don't do that. <laughs> it's honestly awful. So Nick Cage tells Jake that the alien spared his life in this scene because he begged for his life and the alien didn't kill him because the alien thought he was crazy. Yeah, I begged for my life, but he thinks I'm crazy. There's no honor in killing crazy. Oh, so this alien has morals and an honor code and all this. So he wouldn't kill mentally handicapped people or women or children, I'm guessing because there's no honor in doing that. He wouldn't kill people that don't fight back. So who would he kill exactly if these nine jujitsu warriors decide not to fight him? The people that decide to fight an alien from another planet, that's who he would kill? So like the military, maybe? I thought the fear was that he would wipe out everything, but he has an honor code. I'm confused. Maybe he doesn't kill jujitsu warriors if there's no honor, hmm? Maybe that's like, Huh? There's like a lot of mental gymnastics going on here. I'm confused. <laughs> so then the woman jujitsu warrior fights Brax. She's like the love interest for Jake, I guess. In this scene, she blocks a bunch of projectiles that aren't even aimed at her. She's like swinging the nunchucks up here and the projectiles would just go this way, completely missing her. But I guess she wants to block them anyway. Brax swiftly defeats her. And then this other random girl comes out of nowhere with two axes. And she's like, all right, it's my turn now. And I want to fight this alien with two big axes. Two unwieldy, big, heavy axes. 
and she somehow hits this alien. The axes don't do much damage. They go in like a centimeter. You probably should have chose a different weapon. So Brax kills this girl. I like how she just like holds the axes into Brax and just sits there for a couple seconds. And she's like, yeah, I'm screwed. <laughs> so then Frank Grillo's character attacks Brax. He lasts like two seconds and he dies. So yeah, F's in the chat for Frank Grillo. But at least he went out like a badass, giving it the finger. Screw you, alien. I bet you don't know what this means. Yeah, it's an insult. It's a human thing. You wouldn't get it. Jake and Tony Jaw's character fight Brax. Tony Jaw is injured, so Jake runs away again. Remember, he's a coward. He likes running. So he runs away again to uh, save the injured girl that he likes. He has a boner. Does he? If he's gonna help someone, it's not gonna be the guy. Ugh, no boobs, you know? I gotta help the girl. He covers her in like this cloak thing. Whoa! so that the alien can't see them. It's like a like a cloak that hides them from the alien because they know how the alien can see things and they know what kind of material it can't see. How do they know this? No one knows. Don't ask questions, okay? And then, out of nowhere, Nick Cage, he stabs the alien with his blade. <sighs> This is the scene where I'm getting hyped. I'm like, yes, it's Nick time. Let's go. Cage fight. Except they're not in a cage, but you know, because his name is Cage. Cage fight. Nick Cage versus Brax. Who's going to win? Oh my God. It, it's, it's definitely going to be Brax, but it's going to be cool to see how Nick Cage dies. An intense fight ensues. I have to admit this part was kind of fun to watch. Even though there are moments in the fight when Brax could definitely kill Nick Cage, but decides not to. And there are moments when Nick Cage could kill Brax, but just doesn't. It's very weird. Also, Jake and the girl just kind of watch as Nick Cage fights this alien. They don't help him at all. You have power in numbers. Why aren't you using it? I don't, what, what? Ugh. So Nicholas Cage injures Brax, but he heals instantly. Then Brax injures Nick Cage and finally kills him. It's very epic. We're then told that Nick was Jake's father. And I guess he just didn't want Jake to know that he was his father because he knew that he would probably die and he didn't want him to know and he didn't want to say his last goodbyes to his son. It, it very strange father-son dynamic. Don't look too far into it. Yeah, so now that Nick is dead, I don't care about the movie at all. I just want to turn it off at this point, but I stuck it out. I watched till the end, guys. I needed to make sure that I had a full perspective of the entire movie. Maybe the last like 10 minutes is like groundbreaking, amazing cinema. It's not. The alien tracks down Jake, breaks down the door. He's hanging out with this Burmese old couple from the beginning. And this Burmese woman has a shotgun and she shoots Brax. And he's like, oh shit. Is this old woman gonna kill me out of everybody? I didn't foresee that. You know, I should have trained the old people, cause damn. So then Brax decides to use its throwing stars again. You know how it likes using its throwing stars that hardly ever hit anything ever? It just likes spamming those for some reason. So it starts shooting them at this soldier that's running away and it misses every single shot. It's absurd, it's like it's trying to miss. I don't understand what they are doing with the effects in this movie. If you're editing this movie in post and you're putting in all these throwing stars, like going around the person that they're trying to shoot. You don't see an issue with that? You don't think that's stupid? Like, does this alien not know how to aim at all? I'm, what? The next scene is a duel between Jake and Brax. Oh my God, I'm so excited, even though I don't give a shit about Jake. He's the most uncharismatic protagonist in existence. What are you talking about? So then the girl and the funny black guy from the beginning, remember the uh, translator? They help Jake kill the alien. The girl shoots a hole in the alien. The guy throws grenades to Jake. Jake takes the grenades, puts it into the alien, and kicks the alien into the portal. You know, destroying the alien and the portal. Oh my God. Wow, so you never see deaths like that in movies, do you? Where people put explosives inside of an enemy to blow them up. You never see that happen. Finally, a movie where the black guy survives till the end, except it had to be this movie. So I'm not sure if that's a win. 
<laughs> but to be fair, he's like one of the best characters in the movie, so. His name is Eddie Steeples. So yeah, good for you, Eddie. I hope you get some better roles than this, because you're actually kind of funny in this movie. The fighting was decent at times. But yeah, this movie was a train wreck. It's terrible. I know I titled Between Worlds as Nick Cage's worst movie, but that was before I saw this. This is the new king of the terrible Nick Cage movies. If there's a mountain of Nick Cage movies, because there's so many of them, you know, <laughs> and at the very top is the worst, bing, at the very top, jujitsu. You did it, Dimitri. I'm so proud of you, man. You made the worst possible Nick Cage movie in existence. <laughs> you had the most memeable actor alive at your disposal, and this is what you made. Like a noodle or... Pickle. In a movie about jujitsu warriors fighting off an alien? I'm just, I'm blown away. This was a slam dunk and you just completely missed. Nicolas Cage, jujitsu and aliens. This could have been something so funny and so great, but you just <gasps> fucked it. You fucked it. I'm honestly just really disappointed. Cause when they announced this movie, I was like, ah, oh, yes. There's gonna be so many awesome, funny, dumb moments in this movie. I can't wait. And there's like, two maybe and they're not even that great so yeah that's jujitsu it sucks don't watch it if you're watching this video and you made it this far wow i am impressed i can't believe that uh they didn't take this video down by now <laughs> at the rate at which they're harassing angry joe i'd be astonished if this video makes it up on youtube so yeah guys i guess that'll do it for this video we have some really amazing new stuff over at alienclothing.com including this hoodie it's pretty sick Look at it, it's awesome. I'm really proud of the clothing brand right now and thank you so much to everybody that's supporting it. If you have any other movies that you'd like me to review, please put them in the comment section down below. And if you see a movie recommendation down there that you like, please make sure to like it because if enough people like a comment down there about a specific movie, I'm more likely to cover it. So yeah, that's it guys. See you in the next one. Thanks for watching. I'm sorry, Nick. I'm sorry they did this to you, man. <laughs> I was hoping this would be a banger, but it just, it sucks. I'm sorry. At least I get to say pussy on Netflix now.